the political process. So what they are doing is supporting the candidates they want to support. Point number four. And this is maybe the point that really upsets the American people the most. Today in Virginia, today in Vermont, some kid or adult gets caught with marijuana. That person will have a police record which will stay with him or her for their entire lives. Which is no laughing matter because you go around looking for a job and your employer asks you, do you have a criminal record? Is it money? Yeah, I got picked up with marijuana. It stays with you for your entire life. And by the way, this becomes a racial issue as well. Because it turns out that what studies show is the black community and the white community both smoke marijuana in about equal levels. Four times, I don't know if that's something to cheer for, but I'm going to But the point to be made is that if you are black, you are four times more likely to get arrested for marijuana than if you are white. So that raises a whole other issue. A whole very important issue. I'll get to that in a minute. But right now, here's the story. You get picked up today for marijuana, you got a police record. But if you are an executive on Wall Street whose illegal behavior helped destroy the American economy, created a situation in which millions of people lost their jobs, their homes, and their life savings, you don't get a police record, you get a compensation increase, increasing your salary. That is a broken criminal justice system, and together we are going to restore justice to the criminal justice system. Substance Act, the rules which define a drugs in America, the dangerous drugs, it turns out, amazingly enough, it's pretty crazy, is that marijuana is listed as a Schedule I drug alongside of heroin. Now we can argue, and there's a lot of studies going on about the pluses and minuses of marijuana, but nobody who's sensible thinks that marijuana equates or is the same as heroin, which all of you know is a killer drug. Now what's happened is we talk about criminal justice. Over the last 30 years, millions of Americans have police records because of possession of marijuana. In my view, that's wrong, and in my view, we should take marijuana out of the federal control substance act. States in our country, we have a federalist system, federalism system. States can legalize or not, that's their jurisdiction, but I don't think the federal government should be about criminalizing possession of marijuana. Look, everybody here knows on another issue, and again, this is kind of common sense, because everybody agrees. If we are going to compete, in a highly competitive global economy, if the young people here are going to have decent paying jobs, we need the best educated workforce in the world, correct? <laughs> Truth is, 30, 40 years ago, we did have the best educated workforce in the world. Truth is, today, we do not. Truth is that today, there are hundreds of thousands of young people, some in Virginia, some in Vermont, all over this country who have the ability, who have the qualifications to get a college degree, but they're not able to for one reason, their families lack the funds. When we talk about public education, I want you to think about this. hundred years ago, people said public education is very important. It is. Great people help make free public schools in America. And what they said is, look, yeah, I'm working class, I'm low income, but I want my kid to be able to get an education, not work in a factory, not work in a farm. 
That was a huge step forward. But the world has changed. And what a high school degree was worth 50 years ago is pretty much what a college degree is worth today. Okay? If you want to go out, get a job, by and large, there are exceptions, you need higher education. Or you need post high school training. You want to become an electrician. You want to become a sheet metal worker, whatever it may be. <coughs> that is why I believe that in the year 2016, when we talk about public education, we have got to be talking about making public colleges and universities tuition free. under outrageous student debt. Anybody here with student debt? Now I want you to think about it. Everybody wants and believes that education is a good thing. We want you to get all of the education that you can get. And yet we are punishing severely millions of people for the crime of getting an education. We're talking about people 30,000 in debt, 50, 100. Talk to a young woman who's a doctor, 300,000. Debt is $400,000 in debt. That is crazy stuff. And that is why our legislation will allow people with student debt to refinance their loans at the lowest interest rates they can find. Now, I'm a member of the Senate Environmental Committee and the Senate Energy Committee. And I have talked to scientists all over the world. And let me tell you what my Republican colleagues will not tell you. And that is that climate change is real. Climate change is caused by human activity. Climate change is already causing devastating problems in our country and around the world. I don't know if some of you just saw the article that appeared the other day, a study. Sea levels are rising at the fastest rate in thousands of years. If we don't get our act together, coastal communities are going to be underwater. We're looking at more droughts more extreme weather disturbances, more acidification of the ocean. We're looking at international conflict because people around the world are going to be fighting for water, fighting for land to grow their crops. We have a moral responsibility to leave this planet in a way that is healthy and happy for our kids and future generations. As President, I will take on the fossil fuel industry. We will transform our energy system, create millions of jobs, moving away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainability. Now, throughout this campaign, I have been criticized and criticized for thinking so big, Wall Street journalism, a million articles, how are you gonna do this and how are you gonna do that? Too big, too big, too big. I don't agree, let me give you one example. One example, and they can criticize me all that they want. All over the world, you go to the United Kingdom, you go to France, you go to Germany, you go to Holland, you go to Scandinavia, you go to Canada, you go to every major country on earth, and you know what they all say? They say that all of their people, all, A-L-L, -L, of their people are entitled to health care as they want. <laughs> not some, not some of their people, not large deductibles, not a country in which we're paying the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, but all of their people are entitled to comprehensive health care rights. So, let me make it crystal clear to my opponents. Opponents, listen to me. Yes, I believe that health care is a right of all people, not a privilege. Yes. And our Medicare for All 
all single payer program will, in fact, lower health care costs by $5,000 for a middle class family. That's what we're talking about. What the big money interests believe is that so many of our people are demoralized, so many of our young people, I read these articles every oh, young people, they're not going to get involved in the political process, they're too busy partying and doing whatever. <laughs> but this is what I want to say, what I want to say to everybody here, young or old, and this is what I want to say, you don't participate in the political process. You don't stand up for your rights. I guarantee 100% that there are people out there, billionaires and their lobbyists and campaign donors, who pray. They get down on their hands and their knees and they pray that you don't vote, you don't get involved. Because they know if you don't get involved, the big money interests will win out all of the time. They are not worried about workers making 10 bucks an hour. They're not worried about women making 79 cents on the dollar compared to men. They're not worried about 29 million Americans not having health insurance. They're not worried about African American kids being picked up by the police illegally. They're not worried about Latinos who are living in fear and need a path to citizenship. They're not worried about seniors Making it, trying to make it up for twelve thousand dollars. That is not their worry. They're worried about more tax breaks for billionaires. They're worried about more trade policies that will shut down factories in America and move to China so they can make more money. The only way, the only way we take them on is when we do not allow the Trumps of the world to divide us up. But you play off letters, black against white, male against female, gay against straight, people born in this country against people of immigrated to this country. We are not going to fall for that. We are not going to allow them to divide us up. We're going to stand together. We are going to create a government that represents us all. If people come out to vote, please come out to vote. Help us win. Thank you all.